good afternoon students today i am going to discuss about how to draw the correct oxygen dissociation curve which many students are not able to draw actually so we all know that oxygen dissociation curve is the relationship between partial pressure of oxygen which is drawn in x axis and hemoglobin saturation this will come in percentage yeah take it partial pressure of oxygen is 100 so hemoglobin saturation is mostly 100 so what we have to do from 100 100 so i mark a point from 100 to 100 yes so this phase when a partial pressure of oxygen is 100 hemoglobin saturation is 100 or okay 97 is also right 97 percentage in order you get hemoglobin saturation is 97 percentage because 3 percentage will be dissolved flow 97 percentage is bounded with hemoglobin 3 percentage is in the dissolved flow so 197 okay 97 Yes, 97, okay. Now, next what we do? For partial pressure of oxygen, 60. Hemoglobin saturation is 90. You remember my previous videos. In hypoxia class itself, I would have told that is up to 10,000 feet, you should no problem because even when I climb 10,000 feet, my partial pressure of oxygen will be 60, which is low. But even at PO2 of 60, hemoglobin saturation is still 90 percentage. So you remember that when the PO2 is 60, the mark here, PO2 is 60, hemoglobin saturation is 90. So when the PO2 is 60, hemoglobin saturation is 90. Yeah, it is here. So first is when the PO2 is 100, hemoglobin saturation is 97. When the PO2 is 60, Hemoglobin saturation is 90. This is at 10,000 feet usually. So just for understanding I told. That is when you are climbing up to 10,000 feet, you don't suffer from severe hypoxia. The reason is, even though partial pressure of oxygen is 60, still your hemoglobin saturation is 90. Now next, your tissue PO2. So what is the tissue PO2? Tissue PO2 value is 40. At PO2 of 40, what is hemoglobin saturation? You all know the answer. It is 75 percentage. That is, even though PO2 has come to 40, even then still hemoglobin saturation is 75 percentage. So PO2 of 40 is fixed. I will put it here. 75. So PO2 of 40, hemoglobin saturation is 75. 40, 75. Don't worry, I will write it further. Then we all know that P50. P50 is nothing but the partial pressure of oxygen at which hemoglobin is 50 percent saturation. So I again repeat P50 means the partial pressure of oxygen at which hemoglobin is 50 percent saturated and the answer is 26. So this is partial pressure of oxygen at 26. So at 26 your hemoglobin saturation is 50. So it is here 26, 50. Yeah, 2650. So now what I will do, I will just write it down see here. From here I will write. PO2 is 100. Hemoglobin saturation is 97 percentage, which we all know. Next one. I have to draw this, so I will write it here. PO2 is 60 at 10,000 feet. Hemoglobin saturation is 90 percentage. Now, this is PO2. PO2 is 40. Hemoglobin saturation is 75 percentage. Now this is P50. So PO2 is 26. Hemoglobin saturation is 50 percentage. That's why this 26 is called as P50, not at all. So these four points I got. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to join these four points. That's all. So this is the oxygen. Dissociation curve simple and you get the sigma shape you can see here. There is you see here this is drastic fall here, whereas here it is not that much falling, it's almost like straight here from 100 see here from 100 to 90, then from 90 to 75 exactly. So remember 100, 60, 40, or you can remember hemoglobin saturation 97 percentage, 90 percentage, 75 percentage, 50 percentage, then I go to zero. So this is how you draw oxygen dissociation curve correctly. But before drawing, you see that you have to equally divide this 10, 20, 30, which I have drawn.
this one and this one see here 10 20 30 p o 2 40 50 see this space so this space and this space would be equal this class itself i will just easily put shift to right means what this line is shifted to right so i will draw a red color here see here so this is shift to right shift to right so i just put a red color line right side so now see here shift to right what happens normal dc p o 2 40 so p o 2 40 75 75 yes so this one p o 2 40 75 now see here what happens for this again this yeah, 55 so see here this is right sir this is for this one this is for this one so again repeat for p o 2 40 from 75 it has come to 55 so we can mark this one 40 is same so these two are same 40 40 so for pivot of 40 normal of this will come is 75 percentage but as the curve shifted to right so see here as the curve shifted to right from 75 right side right means below or you remember like this right means below so hemoglobin saturation is below decreases simple i again repeat shift to right right means below this below this means below this so under the curve is shifted to right the saturation drops from 75 to 55 like that for example here we can take you can take 60 yeah 60 so p out of 60 yeah hemoglobin is 90 percent saturated but what happens here when the curve is shifted to right see here p out of 60 yeah, it is 75. I will write in blue so that you can understand. The same parts here, P O 2 60 and So this is normal curve, this is P O 2 60, hemoglobin 75. So this is right curve, the red, red curve. Are you able to understand? So shift to right means right side, the curve downwards. The blue color is normal oxygen dissociation curve. The red line which I have drawn is shift to right. So another shift to right, this line is down. Down means the hemoglobin saturation is decreased. So what do you mean by the hemoglobin saturation decrease? Hemoglobin binding with oxygen is decreased. Simple. So under the curve is shifted to right, there is dissociation of oxygen and hemoglobin. Or oxygen binding with hemoglobin is reduced. Instead of 75, it is below 60. This one you have to take. Simple. Yeah. Shift to right. So instead of 75, it becomes 55. Now we can take this one. So instead of 90, it becomes 75. Simple. So the hemoglobin saturation decreases. And now the curve is shifted to right, hemoglobin saturation decreases. And now the curve shifts to right, that is dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin or affinity decreases. Very, very simple. So more oxygen delivery will occur to tissues. That is called a shift to right. Shift to right. Increased oxygen delivery to tissues. And already in my previous video of oxygen dissociation, I have explained what causes the shift rate. I will just mention it. Increased carbon dioxide, increased H plus, decreased pH. All are like acidos, acid. So increased carbon dioxide, increased H plus, decreased pH. All related to acidosis. Decreased partial pressure of oxygen increased PCO2 in fact, then increased 2-3 BPG, then increased temperature, then exercise. So all these conditions causes shift to right. Reverse of this causes shift to left. I am not going to detail. So it is same thing. Shift to left means upwards. So what happens in the shift to left? The curve is going above. So from 70 to 90. So hemoglobin saturation increases. Simple see here. When the curve is shifted to left, hemoglobin saturation increases. So hemoglobin saturation increases means more bending. Or oxygen affinity increases. So delivery to tissues will be less. So simple. Shift to right, more oxygen delivery to tissues. Shift to left, more oxygen binding to hemoglobin. Less oxygen delivery to tissues. So in today's class, we saw how to draw your oxygen dissociation curve. 197, 60, 19, 40, 75. 26 with 24 values 97 percentage 90 percentage 75 percentage 50 percentage
So in today's video, I discussed about how to draw oxide dissociation curve in a correct way. So in next class, I will discuss about acclimatization. Hope this video was very useful. So to further follow my physiology videos, please subscribe to my channel Dr. Sen Physiology and keep updated. Thank you. We will meet in the next video.